right, so tonight has been about equipping ourselves with tools that we can use to conquer the mountains in life. I need to just shout something over the mic real quick. Mishilo, I've got Mel's microphone. Okay. So like I said, tonight has been about equipping ourselves with tools that we can use to conquer the mountains that we face in life. So everyone, picture a large tree in your mind, right? It's a large tree. Now, you cut the tree in half. Tree falls over, and you look at the trunk. What do you see? You see those rings, right? Those tree rings. And in like primary school, that's how, you speak. That's how old the tree is. That's how you tell how old the tree is. And I guess that's true. But also, those rings represent the various seasons that that tree has gone through, that that tree has faced. Here's what I want to say to you first. Every season is in the tree. Everyone say, every season is in the tree. See, that tree has faced many different seasons in its life. Long, freezing cold winters, hailstorms, forest fires sent to destroy it, and months of drought even sometimes. All those seasons are within the tree and make the tree what it is. And we are like trees in this way. Whatever we have gone through becomes part of us and our story, good or bad. But where trees handle it differently, where trees handle it better than we do, is that trees, after that season, keep growing. Now they may, may need to heal or go through a season of stagnation or pruning, but eventually they rise again, they grow again, and so must we. We've all been through difficult situations in life. We've all faced various mountains of various kinds. But what conquers us is how we respond to those mountains that come into our lives. Let's talk about that, that tonight. See, at some stage in life, a fire has entered our life. It's burned up something very important to us something we care about and we are left with the ashes of what once was, of who we used to be. Have you ever been in that place? Maybe you're in that place right now. There's a man in the Bible, the story I found so fascinating, who faced an intense battle that I think all of us on some level can relate to. And his name was Job. And it's the book of Job 1, verses 1 to 3, if you're taking notes tonight. Let me read it to you. It says, there was a man, there was once a man named Job who lived in the land of Uz. He was blameless, a man of complete integrity. He revered and respected God and he stayed away from evil. He had seven sons, three daughters. He owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 teams of oxen, 500 female donkeys. He also had many servants. He was in fact the richest person in the entire area. So in other words, things are going good for Job. Wonderful, blessed family, businesses prospering, bank balance full, and he's healthy, right? Well, it's, a good, it's a great place to be. But then a fire comes into his life and changes everything. In a short space of time, Job went from a place where he, everything was going well, everything was working out, to all of a sudden, everything is messed up, everything is broken. His finances completely wiped out. His businesses failed, liquidated, all of his assets, all of his investments, all of his savings gone, bank balance overdrawn. He's getting those SMSs, you owe us, overdue. And that's a bad place to be, right? But for Job, it got worse because his children, all 10 of them, had gathered together for dinner the one day. And while they were having dinner, there was a storm and a strong wind blew against the house and the four walls collapsed, the roof fell in, and all 10 of his children were killed same day. Now, I don't think anyone in this room has 10 children, but I'm sure that we can imagine what the pain of losing just one must have been like. He lost all 10, plus his businesses. Things are bad. He's in a bad spot. But it gets worse, believe it or not. During the time where he should be mourning or be allowed to mourn in peace, now all of a sudden his health starts deteriorating. He gets these painful sores all over his body now to match the emotional and mental pain that he's already been feeling. Things are tough. 
He's in a tough, tough place. And some of you know that place. Maybe not to that extent of Job, but you can get it. You get, you've gone through some similar things in some areas. Some of you are there right now. And I want to just focus on Job 2.8 a little bit. That, that part of the scripture I find so interesting. And it says, Then Job took a piece of broken pottery, and he scraped his wounds with it as he sat among the ashes. Let me read it again. It says, Then Job took a piece of broken pottery, and he scraped his wounds with it as he sat among the ashes. The ashes. How many of us, like Job, have had a ferocious fire or an unrelenting circumstance come into our lives and it leaves a path of destruction in its wake and we are left sitting in the ashes of what once was? Maybe the fire came and it destroyed your business. Maybe it destroyed your finances or your marriage, your relationship with your children. Maybe you received a life threatening diagnosis from the doctor and now you left sitting in the ash heap of life, surrounded by broken things, by broken pottery. And what we do so often is like Job, we grab hold of these broken things, these broken pieces, and we try and use them to heal our wounds and fix our situations. But the difference is our wounds aren't just physical, are they? They're emotional, they're mental, we feel it all over our hearts and our emotions. Now here's some of the broken pottery of life that you all know. It's when we use certain things to escape from reality because reality is too hard. That's broken pottery. It's when we withdraw from people, especially those that are here to help us. It's when we use alcohol and drugs to numb the pain that we feel. It's when we hurt ourselves in any way. It's when we sabotage our opportunities it's when we push that self-destruct button in yourself because you think you deserve the worst. Hurting others in any way, giving up on our faith. All these things are broken. All these things are broken pottery. But then what we do is we try and grab these broken things and scrape ourselves to try and heal the wounds. But it never quite works, does it? Listen, a person can only use the tools that they have available to them in this life. If my tools that I use are broken and faulty, then my results can only be broken and faulty. If the mechanisms I use to cope with life's issues is broken and faulty, my results are automatically gonna be broken and faulty too. We need new tools. And that's what tonight was about, giving you some tools to help you ascend the mountain. And it's here in these places that we find ourselves in the ash heaps of life. But we must rise from the ashes. Tell the people around you, say, rise. This time say it like you, like you mean it, rise. Say it like it's actually possible, rise. Listen, being in the ash heap for a season is okay. But building a residence there isn't. After going through one of life's storms, feeling angry, feeling hurt, disappointed, even broken is understandable. It's even okay. But we must never allow a process that is meant to be a temporary journey become our permanent state. Here's why. Because whatever we allow to stay will begin to shape us one way or another. Good or bad. Everyone say, what we allow will continue. What we allow in our lives will continue. You didn't need to repeat that, but all good. <laughs> the greatest shaper of our character is not what happens to us, but what we do with what happens to us. It's so easy to stay stuck, to stay angry, to stay bitter, to stay afraid. It's much, much harder to rise again from those things. And let's be honest, most of us don't. We stay there. See, the fire, the issue, the struggle, the mountain that enters our life forces us into a life-defining decision, whether we realize it or not. Here's the decision. 
We either stay in the ashes, stay in the brokenness, or we ascend it. We either stay in the brokenness or we ascend it. That are the cho- that's the choices. Here's an example. I've gone through some terrible situation in my life, right? I'm left angry. I'm left bitter. And then during the process, I stay angry and I stay bitter and I don't rise. What happens? I become angry and bitter. See, that stuff, that poison becomes part of me. If I go through the fire, right, and my faith gets shaken, that's okay. But let's say nothing changes and it stays shaken. And I don't fight and I don't rise again. What happens? My faith deteriorates and I become more faithless. I become what I allow. So whatever I allow becomes part of my character, which is part of who I am. And then when other challenges arise, when they arise, I behave in line with that character, good or bad, which results in that behavior getting more entrenched in me than before. It's kind of like muscle memory. Now listen, let's flip it. If the fire comes and I'm hurt and I'm broken and I experience all the emotions we just spoke about, but eventually in the process of time, I dig deep, I press on, and I allow the process of healing to take place in my life. And w- what happens in my life then is that when I face d- other difficulties in the future, I will dig deep again. I will stand and fight again. I will rise again. Why? Because that's what's been built into me from my previous victory. It becomes part of me. How I handle what I go through becomes part of me, and then I either continue the cycle negatively, or I continue winning, I continue ascending, I continue conquering the mountains. You understand? How do we respond, look, how we respond to the pain determines whether we conquer it or not. Now let me say something. What I've learned from my time counseling people, mentoring people in whatever way, I've learned, for example, that those people who run away from situations when they get difficulty, who run away from responsibilities, who run away when they're offended, have actually been doing that before they even come and see me. They've already been running away from previous situations too. So it's not a new thing that this thing made me run away. No, you've been running already. You're just doing what you already are. What I find is when people, when things don't go our way in life and I react or overreact, that when that happens, I find that people have been doing that before they even came to see me, because they've been overreacting all the time already. See, they've already done that, it's already part of them. So it becomes normal behavior. And you know what, the the saddest thing is that that will continue until you ascend the mountain. Too many people get stuck in the ash heaps of life. Too many people die among the ashes, among the rubble. Now listen, but you, will live and not die. Tell the people around you, say, you will live and not die. Don't repeat me. You will ascend. (laughs) You will rise. You will breathe again. You will have hope again. You will love again. But you must determine in your heart right now that you're going to rise from that which once broke you. It's a decision to ascend your current circumstances, your current pain to a higher level of living. It's not easy, but it's the only way forward. Do you know what breaks my heart? We have, we have situations where people are obviously they're angry, they're bitter, they're hurt, they're in pain, and the wound is still so fresh. And when I speak to them, I find out this thing happened 10 years ago. And I'm like, how can it still be that fresh? How can it still hurt that much 10 years later? Because I haven't risen. I've refused to deal with it. I've refused to, to, I want to hold on to it instead. And I stay stuck forever. You were not made for the ash heap. You were made to conquer the mountains. Now I want you to, repeat after me, okay? But I want you to do it a bit differently. I want you to look at the person next to you, choose someone. If it's an odd number, 
take turns, okay? But let's get really serious right now, right? Find someone, choose that person, you got them, right? I want you to look them in the eye. Don't smile. Just for this moment, just be really, really serious with me. And I want you to say, you are not your struggle. Then say, you are not your pain. Say, you are going to a sin. There's a scripture I love in the, in the Bible. It's one of my favorites, Zechariah 4, 7. Let me read it to you. It says, nothing, not even a mighty mountain, talking about a difficult situation, a hopeless circumstance, none of those things will stand in Zerubbabel's way. Zerubbabel was the name of a person. It says, it will become a level ground before me, before him. Now, I want you to repeat after me again, right? But this time, we're going to change something. Instead of saying Zerubbabel, we're going to say my, okay? We're going to replace him with my, because this applies to you. So, let's do it. Are you ready? Nothing. Not even a mighty mountain. A difficult situation. A hopeless circumstance. Will stand in my way. It will become level ground before me. And I want you to adopt that today. Adopt it, make it your own. Because scripture is for you. It's for the equipping of your life. Make that for you and about you when you face with mountains. Tonight was about equipping you with tools, like I said earlier, to ascend the mountains that you face. Let's apply some of the tools you've received in this life and you'll see, you'll see a difference. Let's go through some of them. First one, grab hold of God's word. Grab hold of his principles. Find it for your circumstance. Find it. Understand it. Apply it. Because God is more passionate about your, you succeeding than you are. Why? For his reputation's sake. That's what Tabo, we learned from Tabo. Then Gisette got up here and she said, but also a mountain we have to do is look within ourselves. Because sometimes that's the mountain. Sometimes our greatest enemy is our inner me. And we have to look at that. It's difficult, but we have to do that. We have to go on that journey. And then like Tarai said, and you heard his story, accept the mountain in front of you. Choose to ascend it. Understand that it's a process. And let's add this. And throughout all of it, make a determined decision that where you are now is not where you will stay. You must realize that you were born to ascend. Our mountains are not meant to destroy us or steal from us. Sometimes our mountains are an invitation to conquer, an invitation to overcome, an invitation to grow and press deep and become more. Let me end there. We've given you practical tools to use in your life and hopefully you've taken some notes. Also, these, these videos will be available for you to, to, to watch again in the future. But what I want to do tonight, I, wanna, I don't want to ignore the fact that there's a spiritual element here, okay? And that is, obviously, we have God on our side. Obviously, we want to, some of you are hurting right now. Some of you are still hurting and it's sore and your heart's still bleeding from that thing. It happened 10 years ago or recently, whatever. It still hurts. And you can't even think about using tools because you're still in pain, because you're still upset, because you're so broken. And what I want to do tonight is I want to specifically pray for those people, not those that are going through the worst of mountains, just mountains in general. But I do want to include you. You're really hurting tonight. And you're like, I don't even know where to begin to ascend. I don't even know where to start. And that's for you. And we're going to ask God, just, we're going to step in. we say, God, step in. Step into the situation. Step into their, their life. Step into the circumstance. Step in and direct them and guide them and lift them. Because sometimes we're surrounded by so much darkness, we don't even see the lights. We don't even see it. Do you know the function of pain is to get you to focus on yourself? And so you can't even think about helping other people. You see, when we ascend the mountain, then what happens is we can show other people how to get up there. But we can't do that if we're still in pain and we're still broken. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to have a general prayer. Okay, I'm going to say a very general prayer. We're going to pray like we do at the collective, right? Which is what we are tonight. I'm going to say a general prayer for, for specific things, and then the pod leaders that you had earlier are going to be around you. 
And what's going to happen is I want you to be honest with yourself. We're very, we believe in authenticity here. We always have. And you are where you are. You are at where you're at. You feel what you feel. Don't pretend and hide and, because you're trying to keep a, you know, a facade on for people. It doesn't help. It doesn't work. What I'm asking you to do is if you're not in a good place right now, you're not in a good place right now. That's not weakness. That's just where you're at. And let's admit that. And then what you can do in your little groups that you're sitting in, your pods you're sitting in, and maybe if the pods are small, you can join other ones. And then what we'll do is we're going to pray as a pod. The people around you are going to stand together. We're going to stand with you, for you, believing for God to, to, to move on your behalf. Can we do that? Please just stand with me, stand with me. Sometimes we think that, that, you know, my business failed. And that's something I should be very ashamed of. No, it's just the reality of where you're at. It's just happened. It's something that has happened. Maybe you've got a mountain of debt to climb now. You will ascend. Maybe there's some, some terrible disease. You don't know what to do with it. Maybe the mountain in front of you is now you've got to go through treatments and change your lifestyle and, and, and your diet, etc. It's a mountain, but you can conquer the mountain. Maybe you did get your heart broken by someone through a divorce or whatever, and that pain is still there. We're going to ask God to heal, heal those things tonight. So what I want you to do, whether you, you're a church person or not, whether you're a religious person or not, you're in this place, you just found yourself here, that's okay. I want the guys that have, that have been around church, been around the collective, I want you to agree with me. Stand in agreement with what I'm about to say over the people here. And then when I'm done, pray for each other. Pray for each other in a group, individually, whatever, as a group. Pray for the needs within the pod. Can we do that? Let's pray. Father, I just thank you, God, for all that you are, all that you've done, Lord. I thank you for this evening, God, the, the tools that we've learned, Lord. But, Lord, I thank you that regardless of where we're at in this place, regardless of the struggles that we've been facing, Right now, maybe, Lord, we're in a fire. Right now, Lord, maybe our business failed. Maybe right now our finances fell apart. Maybe we're in massive debt. We don't know what to do. Maybe we just heard a report that our house is in danger of, of being taken away. We're in a bad space. But God, we ask you, Lord, to intervene, to step in and to help us, Lord, to lift us from the clay. Lift us from the place that we're stuck in. Father, maybe our hearts are broken from someone who hurt us ex-husband, ex-boyfriend, father, a mother, grandfather, whatever, whoever it is. And Lord, we ask you to heal our wounds. So Father, as we lift up our voice in prayer, in unity here in this place, for our brothers and sisters, maybe I'm not going through anything, maybe I'm okay, but the people around me aren't. And if they're not okay, we aren't okay. If one suffers, we all suffer in a way. So God, we stand with our brothers and our sisters going through things. Sometimes, Lord, the greatest pains are hidden behind those smiles and the jokes. And Lord, we just remove that. And we just get real with you. We get real with ourselves. We say, God, we just thank you, Lord, for what you do in our lives. So Father, right now, we just worship you, God. We thank you for your presence in this place, Lord. I thank you that every pod prayer that takes place, Lord, you'll, you'll, you'll answer prayer. You'll hear prayer. Your presence will be felt and available, Lord. I thank you, God, that you help us conquer mountains, that, Lord, we ascend, even though the pits are so deep. And right now, Lord, we just trust you for, for signs, wonders, miracles, testimonies, God, from the people that are here. Lift those, Lord, that are empty. Fill them. Those that are so full with other things, Lord, remove that and lighten their load. And we ask you for this, Lord. So I want you to do, what you to do now is just pray in your pods for a few minutes, and then we'll end off.